Welcome and thank you for viewing this video on how to use the Crash Tree Diagram tool. After completing this video, you will be able to describe crash trees, explain how to use crash trees in the systemic safety analysis process, identify benefits of crash trees and the crash tree diagram tool, identify variables for exploring in crash trees, develop crash trees using the tool, and access related resources. This video includes six sections that address different aspects of crash trees and the crash tree diagram tool. You may complete the entire presentation from start to finish or skip around and view specific sections. A crash tree is a visual representation of crashes where each branch represents a variable of interest. For example, this crash tree shows the breakdown of 3,000 fatal and serious injury roadway departure crashes. The first branch of the tree is for ownership, which is defined in this example as state highways and county roads. The next branch is number of lanes. So this crash tree indicates that for state X, fatal and serious injury roadway departure crashes are most prevalent on county roads with two lanes. The systemic safety analysis process is a six step process as shown here. It starts with identifying focus crash types, focus facility types, and risk factors. Focus crash types typically represent the greatest number of severe crashes across the roadway network of interest and provide the greatest potential to reduce fatalities and serious injuries. Take a moment to pause the video and review the data in this table. What crash type would you select as the focus crash type? In this case, you might define the focus crash type as fatal and serious injury roadway departure crashes because it represents the greatest number of fatal and serious injury crashes for the network of interest. Once you establish the focus crash type, you need to perform additional analysis to identify the focus facility type and related risk factors. This is where crash trees can be particularly useful. Focus facility types are those locations where the focus crash type is most prevalent. During the systemic safety analysis process, Crash trees help to narrow the area of interest and number of potential miles or intersections to examine while still including a large number of crashes. This crash tree diagram continues with the previous example where the focus crash type is fatal and serious injury roadway departure crashes. Take a moment to pause the video and review the crash tree. What facility type would you select as the focus facility type? This crash tree shows that the focus crashes occur most frequently on county, two-lane, undivided roads. In this example, you might select the focus facility type as county, two-lane, undivided roads. There is also a large number of focus crashes on state, two-lane, undivided roads. As such, you might focus on both state and county-owned two-lane, undivided roads. Risk factors are the characteristics correlated with the locations where the target crash types occurred. Crash trees help you identify potential risk factors for further analysis. This crash tree diagram continues with the previous example, showing potential risk factors for fatal and serious injury roadway departure crashes on two-lane undivided roads. Based on indicators in the crash data, Potential risk factors to consider may include the presence of intersections and presence of horizontal curves. Take a moment to pause the video and review the crash tree. What do you see as potential risk factors? In this example, risk factors appear to be tangent and non-intersection locations because the majority of focus crashes occur at these locations. While crash trees help to identify potential risk factors, one limitation is that crash trees do not account for the exposure represented in each category. For instance, the previous example showed that 43% of crashes occur at horizontal curves. At first blush, someone could dismiss horizontal curves and focus on tangent sections. However, as shown in this graphic, if only 20% of the focus facility type by mileage consists of horizontal curves, then this indicates an over-representation of crashes on curves. 
Single variable summary statistics, such as the one shown here, can help to identify overrepresentation and confirm risk factors. Regression analysis, while more data and resource intensive, is yet another method to assess and confirm potential risk factors and to test statistical significance while accounting for potential confounding factors. Refer to the resources at the end of this video for more information on assessing and confirming risk factors. There is no prescribed list of variables for creating crash trees. In general, use what variables you have available. Start with high-level variables and add others to explore areas of interest. This is a list of potential high-level variables to use for exploring crash trees. Once you've explored crash trees for high-level variables, it may be of interest to explore more detailed relationships for the crash type and facility type of interest. This is a list of potential variables to use for exploring more detailed crash trees for roadway departure-related crashes. This is a list of potential variables to use for exploring more detailed crash trees for intersection-related crashes. This is a list of potential variables to use for exploring more detailed crash trees for pedestrian-related crashes. Of course, these lists are just examples, and you may choose to explore other crash trees and variables of interest. Remember that you can also use crash trees to explore behavioral factors, such as alcohol impairment or seatbelt use, to inform education and enforcement initiatives. There is no prescribed structure for creating crash trees. Instead, you may want to start with a few high-level variables, interpret the results, and add other branches to explore areas of interest. Think about the structure of a crash tree as a way to tell a story, where the beginning introduces the overall safety issue, the middle explains the context in terms of facility types and risk factors, and the end of the story helps to identify one or more countermeasures. This crash tree continues with the earlier example of roadway departure crashes. The beginning of the story indicates the focus crash type, fatal and serious injury roadway departure crashes. The middle of the story explores the focus facility type, leading to rural, two-lane, undivided roads. If we end the story by identifying non-intersection, tangent locations as potential risk factors, then we might be left with a long list of potential countermeasures, including centerline or shoulder rumble strips. If there was one more branch to indicate if the roadway departure was to the left or to the right, then this would help to narrow the list of targeted countermeasures. You can use the Crash Tree Diagram tool to automate the development of crash trees, which can help you identify focus facility types and potential risk factors in the systemic approach to safety management. Ultimately, this can help to target safety analysis efforts and investments. Now let's see a demonstration of the Crash Tree Diagram tool. The tool consists of eight tabs, shown at the bottom. Instructions, Configuration, Input, Output, Export, Data, FARS, and Alt Text. The Instructions tab presents general information for those seeking instructions on how to use the tool. If you are familiar with the use of the tool, the Data tab is the place to start. To load your data, Simply clear all cells if there is preloaded data in the worksheet, and then copy and paste the values from your data set. The first row of the data must be a header row with a field name for each variable. Each subsequent row must represent a single crash record, and each column must represent a single variable of interest. The values for each variable can be text or numeric but keep in mind that the crash tree will display the values as shown in the data tab. It may be easier to interpret text values when reading the crash tree, so consider converting any numeric codes to meaningful text equivalents. For example, it may be easier to interpret text values for intersection and non-intersection crashes rather than a numeric code that represents crash location. Two required variables on the data tab are the study area and the date of the crash. The study area could be the entire state 
or it could indicate each district, region, county, or other geographic area. The date should indicate at least the year of the crash. These variables are used later to define the specific area and time period of interest. The Crash Tree Diagram tool also includes preloaded data from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's Fatality Analysis Reporting System, or FARS, database. This data is contained on the FARS tab and accounts for all fatal crashes in the United States from 2014 to 2019. The crash data from 2019 are preliminary in the current version of the tool. Note that you may wish to filter the preloaded FARS data to create a custom sample and then paste that data subset into the data tab to create your crash tree. Once you load your data, the next stop is the Configuration tab. This is where you will identify the variables that represent the study area and date of the crash. Cell B2 lists the data type used to create the crash tree. If you are using your own data, which you added to the Data tab, cell B2 should read User Specified. If you are using the preloaded FARS data in the FARS tab, the field should read FARS. Use the Change Data Type button to toggle between the two data types. If you choose to use the preloaded FARS data, you can use cells D9 and D10 to select an individual state and county to study. The field name for the study area should be entered into cell B3. The field name for the crash date should be entered into cell B4. Cell B5 controls the maximum number of nodes for each branch of the crash tree. For example, if a variable in your dataset contains six unique codes and you only want to show four branches at most, then set this value to four. The crash tree maker will condense the six codes into four categories, showing summary statistics for the three most prevalent categories and creating an other category to represent the remaining values. Cell B6 controls the highlight color for the crash tree path with the largest number of crashes. Set the background fill color of this cell to the desired highlight color for the crash tree. Cells A10 through A35 and B10 through B35 control the filter list. Insert the data field names into cells B10 through B35 as appropriate to serve as selections on the input screen. Note that the field names listed here must match those listed in the header of the data tab. You can change the display name in column A to reflect the name you want to appear in the crash tree. Once you've updated the Configuration tab, select the Configure Tool button to finish the configuration process. The next step is to define the structure of the crash tree on the Input tab. To do so, enter information in cells B3 through B10 using the drop-down menus. At a minimum, you need to select a study area, start date, end date, and one filter to run the tool. The filters define the branches of the tree, so you need to select at least one to create a tree. If you are using the preloaded FARS data, Cell B3 will be populated with the state and county you selected on the Configuration tab. If you are using your own data, Cell B3 will contain a drop-down list of the options from the Study Area field you specified on the Configuration tab. Once you've selected the fields of interest, select the Generate Crash Tree button to create the crash tree. A new crash tree will be developed and presented on the Output tab. You can view the crash tree on the Output tab. Note that it may be necessary to reformat the crash tree for easier viewing. You can do this by selecting the entire crash tree and changing the font size. The Export tab allows you to export the crash tree as a JPEG file, to PowerPoint, or to Visio. The final tab is the Alt Text tab, which contains text describing the crash tree including the contents of each node and the relationship between nodes. Note that this alt text can also be accessed on the Output tab by right-clicking either a node or branch and selecting the Edit Alt Text option. To generate a new crash tree, 
Return to the Input tab and repeat this process. There are several tools and resources available to help you develop crash trees as shown here. Visit the related web links to access the resources. The first resource listed here is the Local Road Safety Plan DIY web page, which contains a link to the crash tree diagram tool discussed throughout this video. Consult the Crash Tree Tool User Guide for more information on using the tool. There is also a guide to demonstrate the use of the tool with FARS. This guide can help you to identify variables of interest from FARS to support systemic analysis. It also explains how to use FARS data to create crash trees and identify focus crash types, focus facility types, and risk factors. For more information on the systemic safety analysis process, refer to FHWA's Systemic Safety Project Selection Tool. This guide describes the detailed process for selecting focus crash types, focus facility types, and risk factors. It also explains the use of crash trees in this process with examples and case studies. For more information on the use of regression modeling to assess and confirm risk factors, refer to National Cooperative Highway Research Program Report 893, Systemic Pedestrian Safety Analysis. Technical assistance is available through the FHWA Roadway Safety Data Program to help address questions about the data and analysis methods used to develop crash trees and implement the systemic approach to safety management. Visit the link to access the FHWA RSDP Technical Assistance website. Thank you for your interest in the Crash Tree Diagram tool and its application in the systemic approach to safety management. We hope you've gained a better understanding of crash trees, how they are developed, and how to use them to inform the selection of focus crash types, focus facility types, and potential risk factors.